Now, his surname is Swindle, and that's exactly what Steve has been accused of doing to drought-affected farmers and their families. Swindle by name and swindle by nature. I don't know how he lives with himself. I, I actually hate him. Do you have any intention of delivering the hate? No comment. That's pretty low act. Come on. Come on. Come on. For too long, not much has changed on, on. Daryl Ingram's land. It's dry, cracked countryside on his cattle and sheep farm just outside Parks in the New South Wales Central West. It's been tough, been dry for two years and more. Money is tight. How tough was it to get these? This whole year I've been waiting for about four and a half to five months to get it. And I was lucky to get this hay. And livestock is on the line. It gets that desperate sometimes. You might have to go out and there'll be two or three down and you'd have to destroy them. Things like that. That's heartbreaking. Just because you can't feed them? Just, just because we haven't got the hay to feed them. And then you get people like Steve Swindle. Stephen Swindle, 29 years old, lives in the same drought-stricken community as some of the farmers he's accused of preying on. Mr Ingram allegedly paid for 14 bales of hay that never arrived. Don't you think farmers are already doing it hard enough? Talk is up the second court case once the evidence is out. Swindle has been charged with 10 counts of fraud, allegedly failing to deliver more than 400 bales of hay, straw, and tonnes of grain to farmers. Livestock on properties from central west New South Wales to close to the Victorian border, left to go without. When you're standing here waiting for a load of hay that doesn't turn up, how does that feel? Oh, it's hard. It just turns your gut, it does. And it didn't turn up. Don't be fooled by the green tinge of the paddocks. Everybody out here is doing it as tough as ever. The cost of hay has more than doubled in the past couple of years, with most of it now having to be sourced interstate. So the thought of being ripped off right now is gut-wrenching. But our farmers will keep going, because that's just what they do. It's in your blood, it's in your heart. Craig and Lynn Henry say they went into business with Steve Swindle. We organised to go and found hay and went and got it and brought it back here and Steve on sold it to different people. I was sort of a silent partner to be paid a wage and rent on the, the tractor and the, the ground and all that sort of thing and well, none of that ever eventuated. Craig says he started to worry when suppliers began turning their backs. I sat in the paddock for three hours and Steve made out that the money had been paid. They claim they're owed thousands of dollars. All up, police allege Swindle has pocketed almost $90,000 and say since he's been charged, more farmers have come forward. I guess it's a valuable lesson in life not to trust people on face value. Our cameras capture Stephen Swindle breaking the law, running a red light through a train crossing to avoid our questions. Even leaving it up to some locals to do the talking. I mean it. I'll have the coppers here. Can you understand why we're here, sir? We have some questions for Mr Swindle in relation to the allegations against him about ripping off farmers in this area. I don't have to tell you jack shit. Who lives here? F off, mate. I'm telling you. Anything you want to say at all to these farmers? He deserves to pay it all back. Come on. Because we're not going to get the hay. Come on. Farmers that are struggling anyway, and it's so sad because they've got kids and losing animals, and it's just sad. Friends are charming too, aren't they? Stephen Swindle returns to court next month. We'll let you know what happens.